All right, I'm back. All right. So. So then. Yeah, weird. Hmm. Hmm. So, um, what was I doing? Oh, right. Comics. Comics, of course. Comics. Always comics. So I need to come up with a, uh, a resolution for the fourth issue of Fear the Siren. Uh, for those of you who are new here, uh, or haven't been around in the last little while um fear the siren is the first ever shorts that is the first story i ever started on accidental origin i actually started it on episode three uh about oh god almost exactly a year ago um probably about 20 days or so because i would have started it on the 15th of May 2016 uh, so real close um, <clears throat> excuse me it's something I've worked on over the course of my career in accident origin and then in January I kind of had this realization that it wasn't a super great short story that it would actually make a much cooler comic so I went kind of through the process of adapting it and now I'm on the last issue. Uh, I did the free, three previous issues, and uh, I really like it as a visual story. I think there's some really cool things I've done, especially in the last issue, where I, I had a lot of pages that were, I've added notes to the artists that were specifically about, uh, you know, using those sort of Greek pottery murals and and things like that to tell a story, and I really like that concept. Um, but now here we are in sort of the last issue, and it was the one issue that I didn't have uh, a lot of short story previously written to use. Um, I do have this sort of scene I wrote as part of the first draft, which I think is reasonable. Uh, I think I'm going to use this as kind of my base. Because um, I very much feel like the story should have an open ending. Because that's, it's kind of a myth, right? Like it, it's, it's based heavily in, in, uh, in Greek mythology. I've, I've called it a classical fantasy in, in that it's based heavily in, in sort of the Greek classical period, but it's still our version of a fantasy story. It's not like a high fantasy or a low fantasy. It's it's based in this other sort of mythology and, and world building. Um, so there's certainly that. And uh, basically the crux of this issue is going to be the demon summoning ritual. Uh, and I'm going to make notes of things that I think are important as we go. Unfortunately, I still haven't set up my other webcam. Uh, I need to do that. I've been meaning to do it for ages and I keep forgetting. Uh, so I can't use my like drop down cam, unfortunately, but I will do my best to keep you guys up to date with what I'm taking notes on and why I'm taking those notes. But yeah, so I think the demon ritual is important. Um, I think Zodnik, the satyr being there, is also important. 
Um, looking up on this. Uh, yeah, this is very introspective and it felt weird compared to the rest of the story. Um, as a writer, the one thing I've come to notice in the last little while, especially through the course of working on this story and uh, my other short story project, Dinner, uh, which I've talked about a few bit, a few times on stream, uh, that I am very much a writer who is not super great at internalizing uh, God, what am I trying to say? Uh, I'm not super great at description. I'm very much about vagueness and having the reader kind of infer their own ideas, which works very well in scripting, but not so much in prose. Um, and the other thing I kind of struggle with is character motivation, uh, not character motivations, um, Communicating in internal character uh, thoughts. So for me, I'm very much a detail-oriented person, a uh, detail-oriented writer. Uh, I deal a lot in sort of, you know, when someone's leaving the room, I want to describe them opening the door and how they open the door and how they exit the door and like kind of give us all those little pieces and not just like skip it. And I've been learning a lot about how to summarize properly, you know, like what, what areas should I give detail in and what areas should I summarize? And, uh, you know, for me, like when I was writing dinner, which is about an astronaut, there was a lot of moments where, you know, he'll open an airlock and I want to describe you know, like if he's facing the wrong direction, I want to describe him turning around so he's facing the right direction. <laughs> and it's one of those things that's like, it's not all that necessary in the pros to do that. I don't really need to do that, but it's just this, th like the way my brain works in terms of the story is that logically speaking, if he's facing the wrong direction, then I need him to face the right direction in order to make this work. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I am... A better scripter. I studied screenwriting. I'm more comfortable with screenwriting. It. I think it fits my writing style a lot better. Um, and I think, in a certain sense, I'm also just a little bit more passionate about it. Uh, you know, for me, storytelling visually is is a big deal. It's something I really enjoy doing. Um, I have not done that much screenplay work, though I did study it in school, but there were lots of elements of like playwriting that I really liked. Um, I'm huge into writing comics, uh, that kind of thing. And to me, I really like finding that, that happy medium of, of scriptiness that allows your artist room to play with their imagination, but also be interesting to read be communicative in ways that inspires that inspiration, um, inspire, inspires that imagination. Um, and, and that's a lot of what I strive for in my scripts, like something that's interesting to read despite being a script, you know? Um, so yeah, um, that's just some weird thoughts I have about, about the scripting process. But I look at this, this, this specific um, segment that I had in the first draft of Fear the Siren, and it's very much an introspective piece. And I don't like it because I don't think it really fits with what this story was trying to do. I feel like it's a little bit out of place compared to where the other, like what the other scenes in the story were written. They did have some internalization, but they just weren't the right way. You know, well, this one is very heavily like him questioning himself. And I don't and, and now that I'm talking about it, I realize that this is what the kind of the problem I was having with this scene. Um, 
and and I the thing that I, that I came to this morning when I was thinking about um, this story and how I wanted to end it was I actually really just want to end it here at this moment here before he does all this stuff about talking about a plan and what he wants to do and like all this stuff. I really want to end it like he escapes and he attacks the demon and done. Like that's where I want to end it. Um, also, hi Erica, by the way, uh, I did see you. I just did, we didn't want to interrupt my flow of thought there. Um, so it's important that Zodnik's there. Um, it's important that the merchant Darius is there. I think him escaping is very important. Cool, welcome back, Xenon. Uh, and what's up, Erica? How's it been going? How are things with the writing? Cool, cool. I assume you're on the subway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Zodnik turned into a demon really works for me. I'm cool with that. Oh, and feel free to ask me uh, what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, if, if you don't know who a character is or why a character is there or you want to know more, please don't hesitate to ask. I realize that I've been working on this on screen so long that I just assume people know what I'm talking about <laughs> when it comes to this project, but that might not be the case. Um, and that's awesome, Erica. That's really, really good. How's it doing, by the way? You don't have to give me numbers or anything like that, but uh, you know, is it is it doing as well as you anticipated? Shoutouts, by the way. Uh, and if you're interested in writing at all, you should definitely check out Erica's stream. Um, she does way more on-stream writing than I do, uh, uh, including a lot of workshop stuff and uh, work on her project Twin Crossing, which is pretty cool. Uh, you should totally check out. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate, but, you know, I'm glad you're aware of what you need to improve for that. Uh, it's one of those things that, and as much as I hate to say it, because it's always a weird cliche, consistency is important for that kind of thing, Erica. Um, you know, like, it takes time for word, like the word to travel. Um, so, you know, you, you continually putting out stuff and that stuff will lead back to sales on the first one, which will lead to sales on the third one and whatever, like, you know, it, 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 it's kind of this weird, like circular pattern of discovery. And social media is important. Um, as much as we don't always love it, uh, but it is it is important. <laughs> yeah, you got to build a fan base. You gotta you gotta find your readers, and 
as much as you do stream on Twitch and a lot of those people will support you like I do, like uh, I own two copies of your of your first issue um, in both PDF. So I own the PDF and the EPUB. Um, we're not necessarily the type of people who are reading that style. I personally haven't read it, so I can't comment, but... Uh, that's your readers are out there they are just got to find them for sure welcome back sheeps welcome back okay good i just you know i just say what what happens up there whether whether it's something you know or not is <laughs> another story entirely So, all right, let's do this. Now I got to think through this. What am I trying to do? What do I want to do? Yeah, um, I think exporting some stuff like your workshop and all that, Erica, to YouTube would be a really good thing. Uh, not necessarily all of it, but but definitely some of it, because I feel like that would really like YouTube does well with how tos and and informational things like that, especially if you can kind of cut them up into like maybe not even a full episode, maybe just like find some really good like. 10 minute segments that you can edit together like that you could edit and and post so you could have like a few 10 minute videos of like really in-depth info on certain topics um you know stuff like that where you know you can build your name as a writer i mean a lot of ways that's that's literally what i do with this show right like I post it on YouTube. Nobody watches on YouTube, but I have it there because if I can get one person on there who will look at my writing, then I've made a personal victory. Um, you know what I mean? And it's not that hard for me to do. Uh, and also I like, I like having a record of everything that's kind of happened on the show. So if I need to reference something, I can. If somebody else needs to reference something, they can go back and look at it. Uh, the Twitch VODs aren't kept for very long. So having that sort of permanent record there. And and I like having the website. The website takes a lot of effort for me uh, just because I'm so friggin' busy. But uh, I think it's important. I think it's important because I like looking up resources. I like posting the resources and getting this sort of like if I give you guys some stuff to look at, then maybe you'll send me some stuff to look at later and we can kind of help each other in that way. Um, for sure. So for example, like this, this episode, I'm probably going to include Anthony Johnson's website again. Uh, I know I've included it a few times before, but just in general, I'm going to include Jim Zub's website for sure, which I don't think I've included before. Uh, things like that. Uh, things I've talked about, you know, This is page 22. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that the other day because uh, I, when did I tune in? I saw you yesterday, but I also saw you a few days before that. And I was like, oh man, she's still using Microsoft Word. <laughs> But I understand that Scrivener is kind of a weird beast um, and you should definitely, um, not just for Erica, but just viewers in general, you should definitely use whatever piece of software works best for you, no matter what it is. Um, if that's WordPad, then that's WordPad. I use WordPad all the time uh, when I'm not at this computer because it's very, uh, it's a pretty robust program that allows me to do a few different formatting features, but it's very much 
Uh, it's basic, so it's out of the way. It has very quick load up times because it's so basic. Like, there's just a lot of things to it that I like. Um, so things like that, for sure. Um, Scrivener is not for everyone. I think for comic scripting, Scrivener is like one of the best things ever. <laughs> I'm working on building my own custom comics template. And uh, you can't really do that in Final Drafts all that much. Uh, I've used Final Draft before. I used it when I was in college. I don't really like it. And Trellby, which is the sort of free software whoop, I've been using for, oh, that's Discord. That's not what I wanted. This is this guy here. Uh, is not really super set up for anything other than film scripts. But that's fine because I don't do a lot of things other than film scripts, so that's not a problem. And I actually really like this software because it's very basic and it works well. <laughs> um, definitely. It also imports, an, uh, it actually imports uh, final draft files, which is also awesome. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Cool, anyway. The thing I also really like about it, uh, the nice thing about using Scrivener is that, um, and I'll pop up in the link for you guys here because I, I have this on command. Boom. There's how you spell it and the company and all that. Uh, the other reason I really like Scrivener is it allows me to, to take to write scenes individually in their own documents so I can write a scene beginning to end without having to worry about things before and after inside the doc and then compile it into one final thing. Uh, I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I do a lot too, Erica, is like, because I do a lot of my writing outside of this computer, uh, I'll work on it in WordPad and then I'll just cut and paste it into Scrivener in the spots it's supposed to be. I do that all the time. get for doing the last page first oh interesting okay well let's whoop. that's not what I wanted to do yeah no and and I I don't think you need to uh, like I was saying this at the beginning of the show Erica but like Whatever works for you is the best way to do it. Um, just because I like Scrivener or other people like Scrivener doesn't mean you should. And you shouldn't change the way that works for something that isn't as effective just because other people say so. Um, I don't think you should do that. I've been using Scrivener a little bit less lately uh, just because I haven't been at my computer as much for certain things. Um, also because I think it's important to be able to work anywhere on anything. Um, my cousin who's a journalist uh, once told me that, I have a couple cousins who are journalists actually now. Uh, my cousin who's a journalist once told me that you need to be able to write anywhere 
and having a single create dedicated creative space is nice but you don't want to get in the habit that you could only work there because it'll only because that will hold you back if anything changes um so like this is my office for example i work in here all the time i'm in here you know, a good solid 12 hours a day. I mean, that's not always writing time, but I'm doing other things like playing games or whatever, because this is my main gaming machine as well. Uh, so there's certainly that. But, you know, it's, I do a ton of writing by hand. Um, this notebook here, I'll put that down. You know, like I have all these drawings and, and stuff and hand done things that I think are important. You know, uh, being able to work like that is, is really effective. Being able to work on any sort of word processor anywhere is really important. Being able to work on your tablet is important. I've done writing on my phone. Like I'll write ideas on my phone on the bus. Like I, I do that kind of thing. And I think it's important to do that kind of thing. Um, And that's not to say you can't have a best place or a place that you work better in, but it's just being able to work anywhere at any time. Um, not, not limiting yourself, you know, but for my other series, I'm picking back up again. I'm probably going to use Photoshop word and then import to InDesign or just leave it through word to export as PDF, which is what they prefer to you use to submit stuff. Okay, cool. That's cool. I personally feel like you should always import to InDesign, uh, but I'm kind of a weird perfectionist when it comes to that stuff. So it is, it is what it is. <laughs> um, yeah. So I know what page 22 is. I know that somewhere around Let's do this in a weird way. Because why not? It's interesting to try things. And you know what? Worst comes the worst. I can always make it better later. You ever kind of get lost in the rhythm of the keys? Oh, I lost my rhythm, damn it. caps lock for some reason um it's something that i've been doing a ton on this keyboard that i didn't used to do on my other keyboard but i've been hitting the caps lock like an awful lot and i'm wondering if it's just like my keyboard positioning is just a little bit weird on this one so i like i my my pinky like hovers over it And I was really close to getting it spot on. I actually just eyeballed the amount of pages. Uh, I've been getting pretty good at it. Let's, uh, let's open this up a little bit so we can see. So I should actually just print this so I can see it. Oh, I have a copy of it. What am I doing? Where is my fear of the siren binder? One second.
Voila! I use a ton of binders for my projects. I think it just makes organization easy. Though it does frustrate me that they don't fit identically on the shelf, <laughs> which is weird. I've been thinking though that I might get some like, uh, you know you can get those like magazine holders that are designed to fit on shelves. I kind of want to get like a couple of those so I can put uh, like project in them to store them. So that I could have like a box, like later if I take them off the shelf because they've been published or they're older or something like that, I can store them in a box and they'll be organized properly. But yeah. Uh, which one is this? This is the latest one, right? I think so. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, the latest one doesn't have that first scene. All right, cool. This is what I get for only doing partial drafts of things. Yeah, okay. This draft has it. Cool. Good. Good. Just because I want to have something to look at while I'm looking at this screen without having this one. And I know I can split the screens, but I just, I don't want to. <laughs> it's the gist. Because uh, I want these to be real big and I want to be able to see them properly. Um, okay. Oh, but I guess I have to. Damn. That's unfortunate. The reason I say that is because I want to copy some of this stuff. All right, well, we're just going to do it this way, I guess. Live and learn. <laughs> I apologize for this being small. I know it's probably a little bit hard to read. Um, unfortunately, I can't make the text on the tab uh, on the cue cards much bigger at the moment. And I don't want this uh side to be any bigger either because it will be too big for me to copy and paste effectively so uh i'm just gonna leave it like that for a moment i really wish that this software had a 250 times zoom instead of a just a 200 and a 300 that would make my life a lot easier okay So this part here is what we're doing on this page. This part here is actually what I want to do on page 19. No, you know what? Page 20 will be better. So I want uh, 21 to be two chains. And I want 20 to be um, demon creep. lock 
unlock this actually. Okay, that's fine. I don't need any of that. This is important, uh, but earlier. Yeah, okay. Huh, I kind of contradict myself there. Interesting. Realizations. They are good. Yeah, I gotta figure out how to break this up properly. Um all right. So For those new here, uh, what I just grabbed was my scripting book here, which I can show you. That uh, my friend actually made for me, which was super awesome of him. Two, Fear the Siren, three, perfect. Fear the Siren, four. So the cool thing about this notebook is that one side is nice graph paper, and I love graph paper, if you ever heard me talk about writing. And then the other side is these guys. Now, I have these set up so that I can do uh, panel layout or page layouts and panel layouts on these uh, along with the notes on this side. This really helps me when it comes to I haven't needed to do it that much for uh, Strangers Beyond the Door just because A, I'm learning to let go of control a little bit but B, because I feel like the visuals in that like really just make sense. If it was like I don't I just know what I'm doing for that, you know, which is weird. Cause like I, I've been working on this story so much longer. So I feel like I do know what I'm doing with it, but at the same time I don't, which is kind of why we're in this weird limbo of like me being like, Oh, like I need to actually pull out this notebook and, and look at it so I can figure out like what kind of pages I have and what I'm trying to do and what's my pacing like, um, and all that. But that's why we have these tools, right? Like, that's what they're for. So I'm just sketching here. Oh, I really wish I had my other camera right now so I could show you guys this. Maybe I'll get it. Maybe I should get it. Would you guys like to see my uh, <laughs> my sketching while I work on this? Um, okay, 
So this page is very much a uh, Yeah, this page is very much like he grabs his sword in the bottom panel. Yeah, so he has to break the second to change. Oh, cool, Erica. Good work. I'm jealous of your pizza, for sure. So I want this to be a kind of have Persinoe with her chains behind her back, wings chained, whatever. The demon with his horns here, kind of arm out sort of thing. And uh, Oh, that doesn't. Uh, I really like this image, but I don't think it fits there. I don't think it makes any sense. I kind of feel like. Yeah, okay. It feels weird to start at the end. Usually I'm very linear when it comes to this sort of stuff. But in this in, in this instance, I know the ending much more than I know the beginning of the issue. So it kind of makes more sense to me to do it the opposite way. Which is what I'm doing. Um... Okay, I guess I'm gonna make a couple notes here on my graph paper side. So things I know I want. Um, I definitely want the demon whispering into Persinoe's ear. Persin, no way. Because I think that's a really cool image. Uh, I think this uh, after the chains I want the picking up the sword image I want this weird image of the ritual as it finishes. And I want that to be a two page spread. And I want the goblin install run away during that.
So in terms of pacing then, that, that means before that, I need uh, Hyperinor to start escaping the first set of chains before the ritual ends. but after it begins. Definitely want that. I definitely want, um, huh. Yeah, so I definitely want that, which means that my thing has to go uh, start of ritual. Hyperinor's escape. Uh, we're real close to a break guys. And during the break, I'll set up my camera so you guys can actually see this, but I will show you a summary of kind of everything I've done. Uh, so that you guys can see it. Um, and then I'll make it more visually interesting. So you actually um, are not bored out of your minds. Just listening to me mutter about it. Um, Paranoia's escape. Or starts escape, I guess. This is the proper way to put that. Ritual ends. Creepy demon. Escape Sword Charge Yeah, because I want this to ramp up The stakes Effectively Oh, good job, sheeps Good job. The stakes. Uh, sword. And then charge. Okay. I'm starting to get a better feel for this. I'm starting to get a better feel for this. I was right the first time. I think Creepy Demon should be page 19. Then we have two pages of him escaping the second set. I think that's good. That means that either 1415 or 1617. I think 1617 should be our ritual end. I think 18 should be our stakes rising. Hyperinor goes faster sort of thing. Demon creep. Uh, 
tension here. We want a lot of like flipping back and forth between our two characters. Yeah. And then this is the actual escape. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So I'll show you what I got so far, and then I am going to take another quick break, uh, and I'll set up my camera on my break so that that actually works. And uh, yeah, so I'll go big, big face here for a bit. And I'll show you what I've been working on. So this is gonna be real basic, but uh, we'll start with this. Sort of, sort of laying out notes of, is that readable? That's readable. Laying out notes of like images I like, uh, how I wanna lay this out. And then flip over to the other page. I start building my structure here. It's like, this is kind of my charge. This is going to be, you know, escaping, picking up the sword sort of thing. We got our transitions or we got our weird, creepy demon bit, uh, a ritual double page sort of stuff. Uh, and as I get more into panel layouts, I'll expand on this, but I just trying to get a figure, figure out like what I'm doing per page. Um, and why I'm doing it per page so that I have a good feel for the pacing and then the, the style of story that I'm trying to tell. Um, so yeah, I, if that may, I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, but I am going to take a break here. So I will see you all in a few minutes.